Hi, my name is Sherman Snyder. I'm a Mastercam AE out of the Houston, Texas area for MLC CAD Systems. And today I'd like to talk about an add-on that Mastercam has called Blade Expert. The Blade Expert inside of Mastercam kind of helps streamline and automate the process for doing parts such as compressor wheels, impellers, propellers, turbine blades, and blisk as well. Using Blade Expert, Blade Expert is going to help you simplify and define impeller geometry based on the hub, blade, and the shroud. To go a little bit further in detail on this, Blade Expert has no limitations to the amount of blades or splitters or even subsplitters that can be programmed. Using the stock awareness inside of the Blade Expert, this is going to allow you to eliminate any kind of air cutting and deliver collision-free toolpaths within a simple automated process. There are a full array of cutting strategies needed not just for roughing but finishing in an impeller and inside of this add-on you're going to find that these strategies have been laid out to kind of help you streamline this process. Let's go ahead and dive off into this add-on here and take a look at what it takes to create an impeller using the Blade Expert. So as we see in our graphics window I already have the impeller loaded and inside of our toolpaths manager I have a stock model created already. This stock model comes from the lathe turn profile and inside the graphics window the impellers itself have been colored green with the hub blue and the shroud orange just for visual purposes. Let's go ahead and load the blade expert operation inside the multi-axis toolpath and I'll give this a comment for rough blades. We can see I already have a ball end mill loaded. Next I want to go over to the stock and for our stock model let's go ahead and load that from lathe stock model and then off into the cutting parameters. The machining parameters here we have rough, finish for the blades, hub finishing, and fillet finishing as well. Let's set this one to rough. Let's take a look at the strategy. So we have from hub, from shroud, and morph between shroud and hub. We're going to set this one for offset from hub. For our method, I could start from a leading edge from a trailing edge or zigzag between a leading edge and a trailing edge as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, let's do trailing edge and I'm going to set from center and I want to climb mill each time. For more part definition we're going to have to define the blade splitters and fillets and being that I have them already colored green let's use our masking options take advantage of a full selection of the green blades and we'll end selection. And let's see, let's leave 20,000 stock here and let's select the hub. Being that I got one surface, no masking options are needed, and we'll give it 10,000 stock. I know I got 16 segments on this particular impeller, so I'm going to go ahead and give it the 16, and I'll say all for all segments to be done. And let's simply green check OK on these default parameters and see what we get. So now all 16 segments of this impeller are being roughed out with our ball end mill. Let's go ahead and copy after and let's look at how easy it is to change some of these parameters in order to get a new type of operation on your part. So in this case I'm going to go to the cut parameters. We're going to change this to blade finishing. And I want to morph between the shroud and the hub. Get a uniformed toolpath between both. And you can see I can eliminate my stock for my blades. And let's go ahead and preview this and generate this alarm here. And notice it says shroud geometries are missing. As we go through Mastercam, the shroud, being that I had told it to morph between shroud and hub, this shroud section is added into here to help automate the process. So I'm going to go ahead and select the orange surfaces for the shroud. And now when we preview this toolpath, we're going to see that we're getting a nice clean blade finish on all 16 segments. Now if we wanted it to wrap around we can always adjust stock because the blade expert is going to be stock aware for whatever stock that we have on our part. In this case I got a nice clean path. Let's go ahead and copy after. Let's continue this streamlined process. It's a nice smooth workflow here. 
My next pattern, let's go ahead and do the hub finishing. As you see, I'm just walking down this process. And we're going to take away the stock to leave on the hub. Notice the shroud area is gone now. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and change this over to, I'll tell you what, let's do from the trailing edge. And maybe I want to look at the ordering here and do center away. We'll green check OK on this. And we can see we got a nice clean path for our hub. Last but not least, I want to go ahead and copy one more time. And we're going to open up these parameters here. And let's see, the last operation we had was going to be for the fillets. So let's look at the cut pattern and let's change this over to fillet finishing. Towards the bottom, I have a number of cuts coming from the blade side. I'm going to set this for one. Ah, you know what? Let's go ahead and adjust this so we get a couple cuts there. And as you can see, it's showing the step from the blades coming out. And we also have the hub overlap here for both sides, as well as a hub side. And I'll just do two for this as well. From here, let's green check OK, and let's see how it's finishing our fillets. Now, if we zoom in, we can see the overlap in the center. We can also see the number of cuts that were added for the blade and hub to finish towards the fillet there. So let's take a look at the results. Inside the results, you can see we got a nice, clean toolpath. Blades look really clean. All done within a matter of minutes.